Hello and welcome to our webinar on the Tasmanian Export Awards for 2022. My name is Erin Buttermore and I'm the Director of Strategy and Culture. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Palawa people, the original and continuing custodians of Lutruwita, Tasmania, and the first people to engage in trade and export from this island. I acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging and that sovereignty was never ceded. Please be aware that we'll be recording this session so that those who couldn't make it can play it back later. You have total anonymity. Your names and faces will not appear on the screen. We'll have a Q&A session at the end, but please feel free to enter your questions into the chat box at any time. Other people will be able to see the questions that you post, but you have the option to post anonymously if you prefer. Tom and Georgie from State Growth are also online tonight and they'll be providing tech support and fielding questions to pass on to me at the end of the session. So if you have any technical difficulties, if you can't see the slides, if you can't see my face, please just pop your question into the chat box and they'll try and help you to sort things out. Just a reminder, we can't answer any specific questions in today's session, so please keep your questions very general. We'll follow up specific questions afterwards with you or if you feel your question's being missed, we'll make sure that we follow up and answer that as well. So let's get started. There is a slight delay with the slides coming through, so just be aware of that. The aim of today's session is to offer practical advice to help you submit a high quality application to this year's Export Awards. There are some caveats, however. The advice is general. It's not specific to your circumstances. It's based on feedback from past recipients, applicants and judges of the awards, as well as from Austrade and independent advice that they have commissioned. The webinar is designed to support a range of different experience levels. If you already have a high level of experience with the Tasmanian Export Awards, you may find some of the information quite basic, so please bear with me. To start, I'd like to introduce myself for those who don't know me. I've had more than 20 years experience working in imports and exports of goods and services across the public and private sectors. I was formerly the Executive Director of Trade and International Relations at the Department of State Growth, and I've sat on all sides of the table for grants and awards programs. As a provider of grants, oh, beg your pardon, I've designed programs, set criteria and guidelines, sat on selection panels and overseen the delivery of projects. And as a recipient, I've designed and scoped projects, drafted grant applications, taken care of grant deed administration, and reported against milestones. Let me give you an overview of what we're going to cover in tonight's webinar. First, I'll tell you about the awards and how they're managed. Next, we'll talk about eligibility and how to know if your business is eligible to apply. I'll go through the categories and how to choose which category to apply for. I'll share some of the advice that we received from last year's winners and judges. I'll share some tips about how to prepare your application based on that advice that we've been given. And I'll tell you about the next steps in the process and key dates for you to remember. Finally, we'll finish up with our Q&A session. Just a reminder that you can put your general questions into the chat box at any time and Georgie and Tom will field those and channel them through to me at the end. About the awards, so the Tasmanian Export Awards are run jointly by the Tasmanian De Government's Department of State Growth and by Austrade, and it's part of a national program, the Australian Export Awards. Each Australian state and territory has its own Export Awards program that feeds into the national program, and this will be the 60th year of the Australian Export Awards. It's really important to note that many of the program parameters are set nationally by Austrade. That includes the timeframes, the questions in the application form and the application portal itself, which is managed nationally. That means that state growth has very little influence over some of the ways that the program is managed. I know that there's a very challenging deadline to meet for your applications. These are the same deadlines in every state and territory and they've been set nationally. If you do have specific queries about the application questions, the criteria, or the use of the application portal, they're best directed to the email address trade at stategrowth.tas.gov.au. 
we'll pass them through to Austrade to get the right advice back for you and send that back on to you. Why apply for the Tasmanian Export Awards? First, the recognition. This is your chance to become the next Tasmanian Exporter of the Year or potentially the next Australian Exporter of the Year and then be internationally recognised as among the best in the Australian export community. As a finalist or winner, you'll be recognised and promoted as being among Tasmania's and even Australia's top exporters on the international stage. That will help you to unlock new opportunities and inspire other businesses to develop their export strategy. It's also a good opportunity to connect with others and to learn. All finalists will be offered complimentary registration for their team to attend a masterclass hosted by leading experts to gain insights into the latest innovative trends in global business. This is a really valuable opportunity to learn and to be inspired together with other finalists and to connect with key government officials and sponsors who support Australian exporters. Everyone loves a party. All applicants will be invited to attend the Tasmanian Export Awards Ceremony, which will be held at the end of September. By all accounts, last year's event was phenomenal, so we're really excited about this year too. Finalists will also be invited to attend the National Australian Export Awards Ceremony in late November, and being the 60th anniversary, this is going to be a really big one. Winning a Tasmanian Export Award or an Australian Export Award is a really great way to enhance your brand. Part of the winner's package at a national level is a comprehensive marketing package that includes your business profile being featured in the Australian Export Awards brochure. Your business profile will also be featured by Austrade and the Australian Export Awards digital channels, media coverage and PR opportunities. So it's a really good chance to get your name out there. And really importantly, entering the Export Awards gives you the chance to get actionable advice. A panel of expert judges with deep knowledge about exports will be reviewing your application. They will give you feedback on your application submission that could help you to move your export strategy forward. Eligibility. There are three elements to eligibility for the awards. Business eligibility, product or service eligibility, and financial eligibility. We'll take a look at each of these in turn. Businesses are eligible to apply for the Tasmanian Export Awards if they earn foreign exchange, hold an active AVN, operate as part of a, as a separate business if they're part of a larger organisation, maintain appropriate business ethics and demonstrate a commitment to legal obligations and that includes upholding anti-bribery laws both here in Australia and overseas. Who's not eligible? Government agencies and government owned agencies, government business enterprises, GBEs, are not eligible. However, businesses that receive some form of other funding from the government are still eligible to apply and sponsors of a state or territory export awards program or the Australian Export Awards program are also not eligible to apply. Is my product or service eligible? The product or service exported must include significant Australian content or value add, and that's benchmarked at 50%. So that might include goods that are made in Australia from Australian primary products, goods that are made overseas, but mainly using Australian primary products, goods that are made in Australia from a combination of Australian and imported components, goods that are elaborately transformed in Australia, goods that are made overseas, but using substantial Australian value add, intellectual property or know-how, including design services delivered in Australia to foreign individuals or entities, and services that are delivered overseas using substantial Australian value add, IP or know-how. Financial eligibility. Applicants must demonstrate that they deliver net foreign economic returns to the Australian economy, net return to Australia in terms of profit repatriation, and creation of employment in Australia. What does that mean? Effectively, that you're bringing money into the country 
and you're creating jobs here in Australia. Applicants must provide three years of export sales data unless they're applying for an emerging exporter award. And applications that don't contain sufficient financial details will not be accepted. There are some exceptions to that. Applicants that are unable to provide export sales for the 2020 to 21 financial year must demonstrate an outstanding business outcome that supported their export efforts. What that means is that given global circumstances in the 2021 financial year, you may have been prevented from exporting for various reasons. Some examples there are perhaps the international education or international tourism space. We're still keen to receive applications from businesses that operate in those sectors. And you might have done something really sensational and innovative in order to keep your brand alive in your international markets, even if you weren't actually able to deliver product at that point in time. If so, please do talk with us about how you might apply. Categories. This can be a rather confusing aspect of the Australian Export Award, so let me try and clarify it for you here. There are both state and national categories. The awards program operates as a two-tier process. Nationally, there are 13 categories and each of the states and territories offer these 13. And then the states and territories can also offer their own state level categories alongside that. But only winners in the 13 national categories are able to proceed to the national awards and be eligible for an Australian export awards. You can only submit an application in one state or territory export awards program, the umbrella program, but you can submit in multiple categories within that program. Now, if you're a business who operates in multiple states, you can only submit your application in the state or territory program where either your head office or the majority of your operations are established. So for example, if your head office is in Burnie, but you have three business development managers employed in Sydney or Melbourne, you should apply for the Tasmanian Export Awards, not the equivalent programs in New South Wales or Victoria. You can only submit your application online via the portal at exportawards.gov.au. Let's go through each of the 13 national categories. Advanced Technologies. This is for outstanding international success in the field of information technology, digital technologies, software, hardware, or digital services, including solutions utilizing cloud-based platforms, artificial intelligence, machine learning, internet of things, augmented or virtual reality, and or blockchain. Agribusiness, food and beverages for outstanding international success in the field of agricultural products, services or technology, including farm production, manufactured foods and beverages, forestry and fisheries. Creative industries for outstanding international success across all creative industries, including music and performing arts, film, television and radio, software and interactive content such as virtual reality and augmented reality, writing, publishing and print media, architecture and design and visual arts, and digital games. E-commerce, for outstanding success by an Australian business in selling goods or services to customers overseas via an electronic network. That includes cross-border e-commerce and online sales. Emerging exporter, for outstanding export achievement by an enterprise in any industry sector which has been exporting goods or services for three years or less. International education and training for outstanding international success or learner or student experience in the field of education and training services, expertise and curriculum, including vocational training. International health for outstanding international success in medical, healthcare or biotechnology fields for products, technology, equipment or services. This includes e-health, digital health, med tech, aged care services, complementary healthcare, biotech and pharmaceuticals. Just to note, organisations with less than three years of export sales are only eligible to apply for the Emerging Exporter Award.
Let's move on. Manufacturing and advanced materials. For outstanding international success in manufacturing, engineering and or advanced materials development. This includes production of consumer products. Professional services for outstanding international success in professional business services, including legal, accounting, administration and support services, business management, marketing services, franchising and licensing, engineering, financial and insurance, market research, tourism and translation services. Regional exporter for outstanding international success by a business whose head office and or the majority of their operations are based in a non-metropolitan location. Resources and energy for outstanding international success in the production, processing, value adding of extractive resources or provision of equipment, services or solutions related to the resources and energy sectors. Small business for outstanding international success by any business with total annual sales not exceeding $10 million. And sustainability for outstanding international success in environmental solutions, clean energy innovation, materials and energy efficiency, renewable energy, waste and water management, green buildings, smart cities and R&D collaboration. Another note, Organisations whose head office or where the majority of operations are established is in a non-metropolitan area may also apply for the Regional Exporter Award. So you can probably see that there's one or more categories there that might suit your business. But the plot thickens. Some categories are only offered at the state and territory level. And as I said before, winners of a state or territory category do not proceed to the national program. For Tasmania this year, our three state categories are the Tasmanian Young International Exporter of the Year, which is for a Tasmanian under the age of 35, who's made a significant contribution to the international exporting success of a Tasmanian business. Tasmanian Women in International Trade, which is for a Tasmanian woman or group of women, who've made a significant contribution to the international exporting success of a Tasmanian business or industry. Tasmanian Defence Industries Exporter of the Year for outstanding achievement and capability of a Tasmanian business in designing, adapting, manufacturing and or growing export sales of world-class products, inputs or services into global defence industry markets. We also have an overall category for the Tasmanian Exporter of the Year. One overall winner from the national category winners will be selected by the Tasmanian Government and awarded Tasmanian Exporter of the Year in recognition of their outstanding success. To achieve Exporter of the Year, you must apply in one or more of the national categories. So what else do you need to know? Again, businesses can apply under multiple categories. If you want to proceed to the national awards, you have to apply in one of those national categories. You can only apply under one state or territory award system in order to make your way through to the national categories. While you can apply for one or more national categories, you're only eligible to win an award in one national category. So even if you've got a great story that fits with multiple categories, the judges will only advance you in one category. All applications are strictly confidential. The judges are vetted and they must sign confidentiality and conflict of interest disclosures to participate in the process. I'd like to share with you now some feedback that we've received from our past winners and judges. Last year's winners said, I found the whole experience in putting forward our submission to be quite straightforward and the communication backwards and forwards gave you all the information and insight needed. I would advise the applicant to ensure they have their financials ready to go, which of course require a breakdown for regions. Create a working paper and then copy and paste into the platform. There's a restricted word limit, so this needs to be complied with at the outset, otherwise a lot of time will be spent amending to reduce to the limit. 
Images that need to be uploaded should be taken professionally. I was disappointed that it was not possible to upload a simple graphic into the electronic application. The most challenging thing is how to explain export success without doing anything different except sticking to your long-term business strategy. The application form is seeking innovation or creative ways to do business differently, but sometimes sticking to the plan and executing it well is what brings success. The Export Awards website gave good indication of past winners and the profiles of these businesses. I referred to this a lot. Even though the dinner was impacted by COVID, it's a great opportunity to mix with export leaders of your state. Great networking opportunity and we've utilised and built some great relationships as a result of this experience. Overall, I would suggest applicants to be proud of what they achieved, no matter how big and small. We asked last year's judges two questions. First, what stood out about last year's winning applications? Here's what they told us. For me, it was their ability to innovate under pressure, understanding their customers and matching it with a brand promise. They were complete and nothing was left unanswered or unattached. An applicant must score high in every section to score highly overall. They were inspiring. All questions were answered in full on history of the firm and especially what had happened in the last 12 months. What's happening in the future briefly is good to know, but the judging is on the previous 12 months. Even if a large company, they completed the financial section in full, so it was easy to see what happened clearly and I didn't have to spend time trawling through an annual report. If an annual report is attached, it must be the most recent, not two years old. It must be seen that the applicant spent time on the application and that it was not rushed. It's very easy to pick a rushed application. The financials saw improvement from year to year with a strong upward trend. They could compete on the national stage and potentially win an Australian Export Award for Tasmania. Demonstration of excellence in a broader sense than their category alone. For example, deep support for or collaboration with their local communities or businesses and ingenuity in the face of adversity, such as responding to the loss of a major account. Winning applications had clearly invested time and effort on their application. We also asked last year's judges what would have improved the applications received last year. They told us, brevity, simplicity, and specificity. Many were obviously rushed, so time must be set aside to complete the application, providing full and interesting information in each section. The applications need to concentrate on the specific time frame. Too many waxed lyrical about what they were doing in future. We can't judge the future. What makes them great needs to be brought to the fore. A Me Too application is not inspiring. Evidence of a winning strategy and teamwork to succeed needs to be brought to the fore. There needs to be something exceptional achieved that relates to the category entered. A winning financial outcome needs to be evident. Understanding their numbers better and including relevant information to their award. And what about at a national level? Here's some advice for applicants from Australian Export Awards Judge Swati Dave. When it comes to crafting a compelling application, Dave suggests considering the following elements when responding to the judging criteria to help separate you from the pack. A clear value proposition. What's the problem that you're solving? For me, that's got to come through very easily. Ambition. I like to see that they've been bold, have ambition and aren't limiting themselves. That's what drives people to keep going. Innovation. There are always going to be challenges and this is where creativity and innovation can be really important to exporters. A community mindset. While a business can be doing great things, it must also be doing great things for its people and its community. This is really important to me. The secrets to success. Dave's advice for creating a successful export business goes back to the basics. You need to understand the market, the risks and the opportunities. You need to know what unique skill, product or capability you bring. 
then factor this into your business plan, your approach, your timing, and your financing. Dave also points to leveraging the community around you. There's a lot of great experience within Australia, she advises. Many exporters are incredibly generous with their time and their advice. So I'd encourage all exporters to tap into their networks and their communities. Putting all of that together, here are some tips for preparing your application. First, check your eligibility. Register through the online portal and bookmark a link to the application preview. Save a copy of the National Awards Categories Eligibility Criteria and refer to this when you're choosing which categories apply to your business. Assign someone to be responsible for preparing your application. This can be someone internal to your business or you can use an external consultant. Gather the information that you need to support your application. You may wish to schedule meetings with internal uh, divisions such as HR and finance to sort the, source the right information with plenty of time before your deadline. And speaking of deadline, allow enough time. The average time taken to complete the application really depends on the size of your business, the amount of internal stakeholder engagement you need to do, and the resourcing that you have dedicated to the application. If you already have all that financial information and HR information at your fingertips, it's going to be much easier to bring the application together than if you have to create it from scratch. When it comes to writing your application, start a separate Word document and copy paste the questions and word limits there so that you can draft your response. Read the criteria very carefully and make sure your response answers exactly what has been asked. Focus on your international business success, emphasising your achievements in the current year, so 2021-22. Use actual examples where possible to demonstrate your responses. Tell a good story, be inspirational, proofread your application, ask someone else who doesn't know the story to read it for you. This is a format that you can use in helping you to frame your answers to each question. It's called the STAR format. STAR stands for situation, task, action, and result. So for situation, what was the context? What factors were at play? To task, what did you set out to achieve? Action, how did you go about doing it? And result, what was the outcome? So for example, imagine you're an exporter of Tasmanian gemstones and you've decided to enter the high-end jewellery market in Paris. Let's imagine it's a fiercely guarded market where it's very difficult to get relationships with jewellers and designers. Your task is to secure contracts with several of the top jewellers in market. The action you might take could be to propose a collaboration with an up and coming jewellery designer and an Instagram influencer with a huge following, including several film stylists. This might lead to your gemstones being featured in the next James Bond film. The result is that suddenly jewellery stores are reaching out to you to try to get hold of your product rather than the other way around. Here are some more useful tips. Be very clear. Make sure that you link your results to your actions. Don't assume that the judges are already aware of your organisation, its products or its successes. You have the opportunity to edit your responses at any time until the applications close. You can draw on resources like Austrade, the Export Council of Australia and the Department of State Growth to guide you. Ask the senior staff from within your organisation to review and approve your responses prior to submission. I can't say it enough, please regularly save your application. You don't want a catastrophic computer failure to make you have to start from scratch. Ensure that your application is 100% complete before submitting it. And read your application aloud. It's a great way to catch errors. Attachments. I know this has been something of a bone of contention. The application portal is designed for minimal attachments only. The image or picture section of the application is only for images that represent the business's services or products. That's what's going to be used for promotion of the awards in the Austrade brochure. 
After all the data has been entered into the correct parts of the form, you can upload PDFs as supporting documentation if necessary, but try not to go overboard here. Make sure that your written application tells the story on its own. I know that some applicants would like to be able to upload graphs, charts or diagrams to illustrate their application, but unfortunately the system doesn't support that. Even though that might be frustrating to you, it is a level playing field. Everyone else is applying via the same system. Next steps. So after applications close on the 10th of June, your submission will be reviewed by a panel of judges. The judges will meet to discuss their findings and they'll rank the applications received. If the panel recommends your application for an award, the next step is due diligence. Background checks will be undertaken to verify the information that you've provided. National category winners will then be submitted to Austrade for consideration through the National Awards Program. Key dates to remember, number one, the applications close on the 10th of June, so please make sure you have completed and submitted your application by then. State-based judging will be conducted in late June with results submitted to Austrade in early July, and that's when they will start considering the national export awards in the background. In the middle of August, registration will open to attend the Tasmanian Export Awards 2022 Gala Dinner, which will be held on the 30th of September in Hobart. So please mark the dates in your diary. And then those state winners of national categories will be sent on to attend the 60th Australian Export Awards 2022 ceremony in Canberra on the 24th of November. You may be wondering who judges the applications. We're in the process of assembling panels of judges for each of the categories. Judges will be selected for their export knowledge and their impartiality. Judges are vetted and must sign confidentiality and conflict of interest disclosures to participate in the process. The judges may include category sponsors who are not eligible to apply to eliminate any conflict of interest there. So there you have it. I'd now like to open the floor for questions. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can see the chat box. Thank you and good luck. Sorry, once I can stop sharing, I know there's an option here. There we go. Great, so I'm just opening the Q&A box here so I can see what's come up over the course of the webinar. It's just taking a moment to load. Which carries more weight, my financials or my story? That is my marketing strategy or my product story? That's a really good question. Effectively, it's a balance between the two. So the financials should be providing the evidence to back up your story. So you'll tell a great story about how what you did led to extra export sales, and that should be entirely evident in the financial data that you submit. So really, the answer is both. They're both important. With a little word limit per question, what advice do you have for picking my best example to share? Brevity, simplicity and specificity. So choose the example where you find yourself telling the story at dinner parties or to friends. The one that inspires people, the great story that really gets people excited about what's going on in your business. Practice refining it until you can say it in as few words as possible. Think about describing the story as a haiku. Use that star format and break it down. What was the situation? What did you set out to achieve? What was the action that you took? And what was the result? And thirdly, other states would have pretty strong stories and financials. Do we even win many, many national awards? Um, 
I'd have to check the results with um, my colleagues at State Growth, but yes, I think Tasmania does do pretty well. We punch well above our weight as exporters on the national stage, and we do have some really great innovation happening here in Tasmania because we're just that little bit different from the rest of Australia. We have a very unique Tasmanian brand and we've got great stories to tell. So please don't count yourselves out just on the basis of being Tasmanian. We really want to see you up there on the stage and be cheering for you. Any other questions that people would like to add? Here's one now. What if we had solid financials, but our story isn't that interesting? How can I make that interesting? Without knowing the specifics, it's really difficult to say, but there's always some kind of a hook in your story that is going to be interesting to other people. It might seem really boring to you because it's what you do every day, but think about the drama of when you didn't think that you were going to achieve what you set out to. What obstacles were in your way? What barriers? How did you overcome them? Try and tell your story like a hero's journey. What did you, what obstacles did you have to get over in order to achieve what you did? Every story is interesting if it's told in the right way. Any other questions? Looking back to the chat box. Okay, it looks as though we've come to the limit. If there's anything that you do want to ask, then please do send your emails through to trade at stategrowth.tas.gov.au. We're happy to field those questions, pass them on to Austrade for any, um, any additional advice that we might need. And we really wish you the best success for your application this year. We look forward to reading all of your applications. Oh, one more quick question. When we're asked to list, do the judges really want a list of things? Yes, it's perfectly okay to use dot points within your application. So list things out where that's asked for. That's fine. All right, okay, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you soon.